damn cables. What's the difference between 3, 4 and 6, 8? Is there a difference at all? Well, actually there is, and it's a very simple difference. To understand the difference between 3, 4 and 6, 8, we first need to understand a little bit about time signatures, what they are and how they're formed. A time signature, very simply, tells the musician how many beats are in each bar. A time signature consists of two numbers, a top number and a bottom number. The top number is the easy one. This says simply how many beats are in each bar. So if the top number is 3, there are 3 beats in each bar. If the top number is 7, there are 7 beats in each bar. The bottom number is the one that confuses people sometimes. This tells us the note value of each beat. If you think of the note values, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, etc., they are all presented as a fraction. Quarter notes has a four on the bottom, eighth notes has an eight on the bottom, sixteenth notes has a sixteen on the bottom, just like the mathematical fractions. Well, this is the same thing for the bottom number of a time signature. If that bottom number is a four, we're dealing with quarter notes. If that bottom number is an eight, we're dealing with eighth notes, a sixteen is sixteenth notes, and so on. If we see a simple time signature, we can put a simple sentence to that time signature. There are top bottoms per bar. In other words, if we have a time signature of 3-4, there are three quarter notes per bar. 6-8 tells us there are six eighth notes per bar. Even a rudimentary understanding of time signatures tells us that 3-4 and 6-8 are mathematically equivalent. Quarter notes, as we know, each contain two eighth notes. So if we have three quarter notes, we naturally have six eighth notes already. So why do we need a separate time signature for 6-8? Indeed, is there any difference at all? The second thing we need to understand is the difference between binary and ternary time signatures. Binary time signatures deal with groups of two. Ternary time signatures deal with groups of three. So let's start with our binary time signature, 3-4. We know this is a binary time signature because this deals with quarter notes. As we've just discussed, quarter notes divide evenly into two eighth notes. We usually count these as an and, one and two and three and four and. A quarter note naturally and by definition contains two eighth notes. If we were to play a three four, we have three quarter notes per bar. One, two, three. I'm going to divide that up into eighth notes on the hi-hat and I'm going to play the quarter notes between the bass drum and the snare drum. Beat one is going to play on the bass drum, beats two and three on the snare drum. One and two and three and. You can hear there that distinct three beat rhythm. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is because of the binary nature of our time signature. Each of those quarter notes, three of them, divide evenly into groups of two. One, and, two, and, three, and. Or if you prefer, one, two, one, two, one, two. What about six, eight then? Six, eight, as we've just discussed, tells us we're dealing with eighth notes. There are six of them. So surely we just have the same six eighth notes per bar. One, two, three, four, five, six. We do, but they are divided differently this time. In order to achieve a ternary time signature, we are no longer dealing with quarter notes. We are now dealing with a new note value, dotted quarter notes. If you are unfamiliar, a dot next to a note extends its value by 50%. So a standard quarter note, as we've seen, contains two eighth notes. Now, a dotted quarter note contains three. The time signature of 6-8, being a ternary time signature, deals with dotted quarter notes, in this case, two of them. Each dotted quarter note contains three eighth notes, giving us our six eighth notes for the bar. Unlike the previous example, in which we worked with three quarter notes, we are now only dealing with two of them, but each one being dotted contains three eighth notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. I will play beat one on the bass drum, and that second quarter note on the snare drum, each dotted quarter note is now going to contain three eighth notes on the hi-hat. One, two, three, four, five, six.
You can hear a drastic difference between the 3-4 we played a moment ago. Now, we've only got two main focus points per bar, but each of those is divided into groups of three eighth notes. Now, you may be wondering here, how come we're using a time signature with an 8 on the bottom if we are actually dealing with dotted quarter notes? Well, the simple answer is there is no fraction that neatly describes dotted quarter notes. As a general rule of thumb, if you see a time signature with a 4 on the bottom, that is a quarter note based time signature telling us we are binary. So that doesn't matter if it's 3 4, 5 4, 11 4, or anything else with a 4 on the bottom, we are always dealing with quarter notes 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and to whatever the top number tells us. If that bottom number is an 8, it is likely, but not necessary, that we are dealing with ternary time signatures, dotted quarter notes. What we need to remember today is that 6-8 is telling us, yes, we are dealing with eighth notes, but we need to use dotted quarter notes to achieve six of them. So, put very, very simply, 3-4, our binary time signature, deals with three groups of two, one and two and three and, giving us a very straight rhythm with three main focus points. On the other hand, 6-8, our ternary time signature, is dealing with dotted quarter notes. There are two of them, each with a group of three. So, 3-4, three, three groups of two. 6-8, two groups of three. One, two, three, four, five, six. To hear this much more succinctly, I'm going to keep the eighth note pattern the same, but I'm going to change between 3-4 and 6-8. This is a kind of metric modulation. In the 3-4 example, I'm counting it 1 and 2 and 3 and. When we modulate across to 6-8, this is going to become 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Notice how the hi-hat, that eighth note pulse, will not change, but I will switch from quarter notes to dotted quarter notes. We'll go a little bit faster this time. When you understand this difference, you can switch between those two time signatures without having to change your hand pattern, without having to change that eighth note pulse. This can be a really powerful and versatile tool in the right hands. If you can understand and internalize the difference between three groups of two, three, four, and two groups of three, six, eight, there's a lot you can do with it. If you enjoyed this video and want to explore it further, I've done a video which I've linked in the description which explores it in much greater depth, dealing with binary time signatures, ternary time signatures, and compound prime number time signatures, things like 7-8, which combine binary and ternary, quarter notes and dotted quarter notes. So check it out. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider checking out my Patreon page, and I hope to see you on the next one. Cheers. Thanks a lot.